Welcome to Tell Me a Ghost Story, the late night call in podcast where we delve into the world of the supernatural and explore the eerie and unexplained. I'm your host, Michelle Newman. This podcast features true stories from our callers that will send shivers down your spine and leave you questioning the existence of the afterlife. So grab a cozy blanket. Turn down the lights. This next story is from the Something Scary podcast, read by host Blair Bathory. Something Scary shares ghost stories, folklore, and other spooky tales from around the world every Tuesday. You can find them on YouTube, where they do a weekly animated scary video. I'm so glad they were able to share their story with us today. I hope you enjoy. Hello. This is Blair Bathory, calling from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm not sure when exactly we started doing more dangerous stunts, things that would get us in serious trouble if we were caught, rather than just mostly harmless pranks. None of us really wanted to get expelled or spend a night in jail, and we never thought for one minute we'd have a brush with death. The four of us had been buddies since the start of middle school, Me, Jack, Theo, and Joey. We weren't popular, but we weren't misfits either. Just a group of friends who did okay in class, okay in sports, and always had each other's backs, making our own entertainment. Somewhere along the line, that move from hiding the neighbors' newspapers or setting off the sprinklers to breaking into the high school the day before we started freshman year. It was Joey's idea. As the only girl in the gang... She held all the power and often led us astray. So when she told us she'd heard about a way to break into the basement so we could carve our initials onto the gym lockers before anyone else and therefore be de facto heroes, well, of course, we couldn't say no. She was right as always about the dodgy window, and before we really knew it, we were crawling through the old, dusty opening. But instead of looking for a lost sibling or pirate treasure... Our prize was the kudos of being the first kids in the entire grade to deface school property. We roughly knew the layout, having been to the building for orientation and sporting events over the years. We knew we had to get across to the other side of the building, and the safest route was staying in the basement, which was easier said than done as it seemed to hold enough files, paperwork, and even bizarre-looking old-fashioned medical equipment to span each and every of the 100 plus years the building had been standing. When I mentioned this, Jack informed us that when it first opened, the town was far smaller and so it served not just as a high school, but also as a quasi juvenile correction facility and a sort of halfway house for orphans. I stood still for a moment in shock. Why had I never heard the story? Joey and Theo claimed not to know either, and Jack shrugged his shoulders saying it wasn't talked about anymore because of an accident about 80 years ago where an orphan disappeared. He only knew because his mom was president of the local historical society and had been doing some research. We carried on navigating our way through decades of debris when I stopped and turned around to tell whoever was behind me to stop getting so close and breathing down my neck. But there was no one there. I was the last in the line. I chose not to think too much about that until Theo, who was in front of me, stopped and asked why I kept kicking him. And that was when Joey, who was a trailblazer as always, let out a tremendous scream. Can you see him? And then we could. A small, translucent boy, around 10 years old. It seemed like he had been badly beaten in life and still carried the bruises and marks in death. Because Jack's mom was right. The school had housed orphans at the beginning, and some of the faculty hadn't liked that one bit. They believed themselves above teaching waifs and strays. One teacher in particular was a nasty tyrant who enjoyed dishing out physical punishment. What Jack's mom hadn't been able to discover, because it was one of the town's best-kept secrets, was that one time one of those terrible punishments had gone too far, and a boy had actually died. This boy 
now in front of us. He looked at us and then all of a sudden let out a scream even louder than Joey's. His eyes flashed through his ghostly pallor and we knew he was malevolent, hell-bent on revenge. Run! shouted Theo, heading back the way we'd come and we didn't hesitate for one second. When Jack tripped, we quickly grabbed hold of him and pulled him along. I don't think I took a breath until we were on the other side of that window, out of the basement, the school, and far away from whatever the hell that boy was now. But now we had a big decision to make. We had witnessed something truly terrible, but who would ever believe us? Was it worth the ridicule and harm it could cause to dig up the past, especially a past that had been so well hidden for so long? Our answer came in the form of yet another scream from back inside the basement. One so loud and fueled with rage that the window we had just crawled out of almost shattered. We knew what we had to do to allow the boy to finally be at peace. And who knew what other secrets our town might be hiding. Thank you, Blair, for your story. And next week, we'll be back to our regular scheduled program. Do you have a ghost story? Call 701-484-2666. That's 701-484-2666. Or go to tellmeaghoststory.com and leave your story there. Go ahead and leave me a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Was something particularly scary in this episode? Or maybe you've had a similar experience. Leave your comments via our Spotify page. Thank you to all the callers who left messages this week. And as always, I'm your host, Michelle Newman, signing off. See you next week. Let's go,